Hello, and thank you for joining us for the ECFI Program Update webinar. Our goal today is to provide you with updates on key product revisions and availability, administrative improvements, and a preview of content changes due to the new guidelines. My name is Tiffany Slider. I'm the ECFI Acquisitions Editor, and I'm joined by Christine Emerton, our Vice President of Product Development, Denise Howard, our ECFI Sales and Regulatory Affairs Manager, and Bob Elling, our ECFI Series Editor. All ECFI programs are offered in association with the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons and the American College of Emergency Physicians. Together, we want to help you teach others to save lives. We do this by providing up-to-date and comprehensive training materials available at the lowest prices possible, dramatically reducing administrative burdens, and ensuring the highest quality and most responsive customer service. We are currently updating all of our materials to align with the new 2015 CPR and ECC guidelines. Please note that it's fine for you to continue using our current materials until the revised products are available. To help guide you, interim training documents, including the CPR matrix and cardiac arrest algorithm, are now available on our website. Bob Ellen will be highlighting some of these key changes later on in our presentation. Our standard first aid, CPR, and AED products group is receiving the most significant makeover. For starters, we've decreased the physical size of the student manual and focused on modularizing much of the content into decision tables, flowcharts, and bulleted lists. Our goal is for this manual to serve as a valuable post-certification reference guide for students. Here are some examples of the improvements we've been making. What to look for, what to do, decision tables throughout provide a summary of what signs first aiders should look for and what treatment they should provide for the emergencies presented in the text. Do not statements highlight important do's and don'ts while administering first aid and CPR. Full color updated illustrations and photographs throughout enable students to visualize common signs and treatment options. Brand new skill sheets follow the latest guidelines and provide step-by-step -step explanations and visual summaries of important skills. Tables throughout help to summarize key information and provide students with an easy point of reference. Lastly, easy-to-follow easy flowcharts help to clarify multi-step decision-making processes. We also want you to have flexible options for the way you teach your class. In addition to the traditional PowerPoint lectures, the new program will also offer effective and engaging active learning strategies. The active learning methods include a variety of games, think, pair, share activities, scenarios that students can troubleshoot using the accompanying flowcharts, and skill checkoff sheets where students can perform a circuit of skills where the classmates check off the skills as they are completed. Please note that we will no longer be offering hard copy teaching packages. All instructor materials will be online and can be easily downloaded to a computer for seamless offline access. We will also be including brand new and up-to-date skill demonstration videos that will be available for download. Now I'm pleased to share with you the publication dates for our revised products. The exciting new edition of our standard program will be available in March closely followed by our standalone first aid and CPR and AED programs in April. We will also be releasing a fully updated edition of our advanced manual and instructor materials in April. And don't forget about our healthcare provider CPR program coming out this June. This summer, we will also be releasing our updated online courses. These interactive courses are ideal for busy professionals seeking access to course content anywhere at any time, individuals looking to renew their certification to fulfill workplace requirements, and instructors looking to free up classroom space in order to train more students. Now let's turn our attention to the administrative improvements that we're making. Denise Howard will be sharing an overview of these changes. Please provide flexible course delivery options that you can offer the students the training they need in the manner in which they will learn best. Simply purchase one of these four items in order to obtain a digital course completion card for the course. 
student manuals, student e-books, online course access codes, pocket guides. The best news is prices are not changing. Digital course completion cards and certificates can now be sent by email to the student who completed the course and the student's employer or both. They can be printed out by the instructor and issued to the students on site or both. ECSI Education Centers will now have the ability to generate a new digital course completion card for any student who loses his or her card or needs a replacement. Administrative improvements. ECSI Education Center coordinators can add and update ECSI instructor records. Education Center coordinators can grant their instructors multiple levels of privileges. All ECSI instructors will now be assigned an instructor ID number. Link for, there will be a link for a page where student credentials can be verified by a unique identifier on the digital certificate. And now our ECSI series editor, Bob Alley, is going to highlight some of the key content changes that were made to address the new guidelines. Thanks, Nisa. Um, so fortunately, um, there were not radical changes, which um, the advantage to that is it's given us the opportunity to work on the administrative parts of these books and, and um, all focus on, on many of the things you've already heard about. So, as far as uh, the key VLS updates, um, they would, some of them, um, there will be an emphasis on the value of smartphones or apps such as Pulse Point to alert nearby rescuers and others through the use of social media. The chest compression depth in adults is now 2 to 2.4 inches. So they put a max on it, and the rate is 100 to 120 with the maximum there, too. Uh, once again, they're emphasizing full chest recoil and no leaning on the chest. The emphasis continues to be as few interruptions as possible. There will be more discussion on the value of teamwork or the uh, so-called pit crew style training that's done in many, many regions. There's also some useful feedback devices that can be employed during a code or provide feedback on how the code went um, to the team, giving you uh, information such as the, uh, the quality and the number of compressions and, and the length of the uh, any interruptions. As far as ALS, ACLS changes are concerned, uh, once again, um, the importance of high-quality BLS is paramount to uh, acceptable ACLS. Uh, it was re-emphasized again. Uh, as far as the drug vasopressin, since it's uh, uh, virtually uh, equivalent to uh, epinephrine, to simplify the algorithms, they basically have taken vasopressin out. Um, TTM, or targeted temperature management of the patient with drugs for a return of spontaneous circulation, is uh, best done in the hospital setting. So um, many services will probably no longer be carrying around chilled saline to begin this process in the field. Um, there has been great success with post-ROSC uh, coronary catheterization. So um, careful consideration into where uh, patients should be transported uh, becomes a local decision. Uh, there's a uh, also, emphasis on working as a team and feedback devices as well. Uh, also, emphasis on the usefulness of debriefings after a code to improve future resuscitation and performances. In respect to the uh, first aid updates, um, there were a number of them, emphasizing uh, the application of a tourniquet and or hemostatic dressings when appropriate. There's also consideration for the need for uh, naloxone administration if uh, an opioid or um, narcotic OD is suspected. There's um, basically, the guidelines are very specific in terms of recommendations for the use of oxygen. Um, the use of supplementary oxygen by first aid providers with specific training is reasonable for cases of decompression sicknesses. Fitness. Um, for first aid providers with specific training in use of oxygen, the administration of supplementary oxygen to persons with known advanced cancer or dyspnea 
and hypoxemia may be a reasonable. Uh, although there is no evidence to identify to support the to support the use of oxygen, it might be reasonable to provide oxygen to spontaneously breathing persons who are exposed to carbon monoxide while waiting for advanced medical care. And finally, um, we're still using oxygen to supplement the bag valve mask for ventilations of the cardiac uh, and or respiratory arrested patient. Mm -hmm. And for breathing patients mm -hmm. with suspected mm -hmm. coronary syndromes or um, demonstrated hypoxemia as uh, or let's to be, to be simple uh, simplify there, basically an SpO2 that's less than 94%. There were a number of um, assorted um, updates. Some of, some of them have to do with um, more emphasis on dispatcher training. There is a new chain of survival for in-hospital. It does not affect what we've been teaching all along for out-of-hospital. Um, the frequency of training uh, is discussed in the guidelines certainly emphasizing that we probably ought to be training more, more often than every two years. And there is also discussion about guidelines, not um, coming out every five years, but perhaps coming out. Great. Thank you so much, Bob. I hope this webinar has helped to highlight some of the exciting changes we're making in 2016. To provide you with a more comprehensive overview, we're happy to announce that our free instructor update will be available in February. All ECFI Education Center coordinators and instructors will be required to complete the course in order to continue training with ECFI. The instructor update will delve deeply into the content changes due to the new 2015 guidelines, review the 2016 ECFI product offerings, and further clarify the new administrative processes. Once the instructor update course is available, all coordinators and instructors will receive an email with a unique ID number and a link to the course. Individuals will have until April 1st to complete the short one-hour course. After completing the course, you will be qualified to teach with our new training materials. This concludes our overview of the exciting plans we have for our products this year. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email us at the address shown on the screen. On behalf of the Emergency Care and Safety Institute, thank you very much for attending this webinar. Have a great day.